So here I am at downtown Walmart, essentially the new downtown where all the small towns got wiped out. But here I am in the wine aisle. I want you to see a few things on this. So you can see looking down this aisle, it goes the entire length of just wine. And when you look at each one of them and try to see what is the difference, they all try to top each other with the pretty bottle. Uh, but really, when it comes down to it, it's all the same thing. Now, wine was originally made just like other fermented foods, and it was left active and probiotic. And the bottles would explode, just like real sauerkraut will blow up the bottle if you don't have a way for the air to get out but not in, a one-way valve. So when you look at all these, the reason why they have sulfites in them is because it kills it. It makes it so it cannot ferment, which takes away all the health benefits of it and just turns it in to basically a sugar drink, if there's any sugar left in it, or an alcohol drink with yeast. And the yeast actually makes alcohol, but it comes from the mold and fungus family. And when you drink it, you get a hangover. Your body's telling you it does not like it, that it is poison to your body. That's why you get a hangover. If your body gets sick when you eat or drink something, it's poison. End of story. You can be in denial about that and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and drink it anyway, or it doesn't affect me that bad. But most people have sinus issues right away when they drink a red wine. And when you look at these wines, they're all the same exact thing. They just put them in different bottles. They're industrial yeast wine with sulfites and other chemicals. They do not have to list any of that. For instance, here's a muscadine. And a lot of people say, well, muscadine grapes are, it's a sweet wine. It's only sweet because they put sugar in there after it ferments. And it, and it really isn't a true fermentation. A true fermentation is one that preserves the wine. This is actually what they call, it's a substitute fermentation, or what it really is, they put yeast in it. And whether or not the uh, juice is old or new, it'll still turn it to alcohol. Uh, for instance, if juice has already been pasteurized and it just has sugar, if you put in yeast, you can still get alcohol out of it but it's not a preserved substance in which you get that juice cold pressed. Just like if you're making sauerkraut out of cabbage. When you make that sauerkraut, you can't cook the cabbage first. In the same way to make wine that's probiotic and healthy for you, you have to have fresh squeezed juice. Then you let it sit all on its own and ferment on its own. Just like when you make a starter for sourdough and then it stays active, so you have to have a way for the air to get out of the bottle or keep it cool or have a really strong bottle uh, if it's way past the point that it's not bubbling anymore at all. This, if you shook it up and it was wine that was probiotic, the bottle could explode unless you keep it cool. These are all the same exact product. These are all juice that has... Uh, sodium metabisulfite put in it right after it's picked so that it can never ferment naturally and have that god-given thing inside of it that turns it into a magical substance it's killed immediately and then what happens is they throw yeast in it so it'll have a chemical reaction that will make alcohol now you have industrial wine but it's dead then they'll put more sulfites in there or other agents, other chemicals, which they do not have to list. And so if you ever wonder why you're getting sick or sinus problems or hangovers from this, but yet it's in the Bible, the first miracle of Jesus was turning water to wine. Why would they, why would he do that if it's going to ruin people's lives and it was going to give you a hangover? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because it's not the same substance any longer. This is just like the Pop-Tart aisle or the cereal aisle or any other aisle in the industrialized age of food. It's industrial wine. 
and to speak to the pretentiousness of the wine industry, it's all grape juice with yeast thrown in it. It's not hints of chocolate with uh, rhubarb on the finish. Like they drag it through a garden or something. It's grape juice, for crying out loud. One bottle will be $27. One bottle will be $5. It's the same exact thing. 98% the same exact thing. All of it. Even the ones they call natural, they still use yeast and sulfites. It's yeast and sulfites that kill it and make it not a probiotic substance. That's what this wine aisle is about. To get good, healthy Bible wine, you're going to have to ferment it yourself. Or I'm having some uh, that I'll be taking to market. But right now it's a too small amount. So once it gets done, I'll let everybody know how to get that. But it has the same health products that all the other fermented foods do. It detoxes heavy metals, rad, uh, fights cancer, eradicates cancer cells and tests, uh, wipes out pesticides, and just so many different things. You can just look up those studies. I wanted to touch on the wine aisle because it's a trash aisle, just like so many of the other foods are. Yeast is a mold and fungus family. It's not good for you. Your body tells you that. Your body's smarter than you are. In many, in many, in many circumstances, that's why you get a hangover. It's telling you that. Don't deny it. Don't drink it. Get the healthy stuff, and then you drink all you want. Hit like and subscribe. See you in the next video.